ever since I first started playing Kingdom Hearts, and it's probably the same story for all of you as well, I have always wondered what that mysterious voice was in Dive Into the Heart. Like in Kingdom Hearts 1, when you first start the game, you see this mysterious voice on the screen. You don't hear it, it's just text, but it guides Sora throughout the whole tutorial and tells him that he is the one who will open the door and all this stuff. No clear explanation in the game itself as to what that voice is and where it comes from, just there. And when I was a kid, I used to kind of theorize and speculate what exactly this voice could be. You know, I was thinking maybe it's Sora's conscience because he's in a dream, or maybe it's one of his friends, Riku Kairi, something like that. Maybe it's Kingdom Hearts itself. Or maybe like Titus, Tom Hanks, <laughs> fucking JFK. I don't so much to do, so little time. Take your time, it's the dumbest thing I've ever done in my life. And Kingdom Hearts 1 is not the only game that has the voice either. Kingdom Hearts 2 has it, Recoded has it, Kingdom Hearts 3 has it a little bit, stuff like that. And yes, there is an official answer to this question. I know, we'll talk about that. But there's some other theories that I used to have and others have that I want to go over, and it's not the same for each game. And even then, I don't know. So I'm going to go over each game, kind of give my own theories as to who the voice might be, go over the official one, and discuss from there. Also, this video is based on and inspired a lot by a video on the same subject by Champion Ashley. So if you want to go check that video out, go do that as well. So of course, let's first start off with Kingdom Hearts 1. The voice of this game is probably the most thorough and most used one, I would say, out of each of the series. Other games have them, but not to the extent that it's used in the first game. Again, it's pretty much there as a guide throughout the tutorial of the game, helping you choose which stats you want to have boosted, which kind of path you want to take throughout the game. It always creeped me out as a kid, the disembodied voice and the text, the way it moves like that to a seven-year-old kid. <laughs> Didn't actually shit my pants, this is a joke. But with that all being said, who was this voice? Because it's there, you know, someone's obviously saying it, and you know, for some people, I guess a good explanation might just be, oh, well, it's just a disembodied voice for the tutorial and nothing really much to it, because a lot of games have text in there that just give you the tutorial, but this has a personality to it, so of course someone's saying it. And there were a couple popular theories for people who didn't know the official explanation, because it was kind of buried for a while. The one that made most sense to me back in the day, because kind of thinking about it, and the one that made sense to a lot of other people as well, is that the voice was Ventus. Because Ventus's heart is resting inside of Sora, as we remember back in Birth by Sleep, and since this place is a physical manifestation of Sora's heart, that kind of makes sense that the voice would be Ventus's, right? But when you think about it more, it doesn't really make sense. For one, Ventus's heart is resting, it's not really active, it's not really doing anything, it's very much asleep, so it wouldn't really be doing anything at all, really, it's just there. And just the way it talks doesn't really match how Ventus talks. Very poetic, very sophisticated, this voice. Another thought I had is that it was Kingdom Hearts itself talking to him. Because as stated in the lore, worlds themselves do have hearts and do have consciousness in the world that never was. The door to fight Zemnis just kind of magically appears out of thin air, and that is the heart of the world itself kind of willing that into existence. And since Kingdom Hearts is the heart of all worlds, and I also kind of think back to a grave mine, you know, like in Halo, where it's like a hive mine of stuff that has so much knowledge combined throughout all of these other existences, that it would have this kind of poetic way of talking and poetic way of going about things. So, you know, maybe it was Kingdom Hearts itself talking to him. I also see recently people bringing stuff up like the Master of Masters because he also kind of talks like that, or Lushu because he also kind of talks like that, and they kind of have maybe like an ulterior motive to guide Sora through a certain path path during the first Kingdom Hearts game in some weird form of time travel. It also could be one of the foretellers as well, because I mean, in the opening cutscene where they're introduced in that cover, they are in the Dive Into the Hearts section, so uh, maybe that's a subtle hit, I don't know. And I know a lot of you are just fuming at this point that I've not brought up the official answer yet. And don't worry, we're gonna go over that now, but I saved it for last because it's just the wildest one of them all. So in the original Kingdom Hearts Ultimania, Tetsuya Nomura, for a fact, stated that the voice is... Mickey. It's King Mickey. That's the voice. Huh. And I say huh because it just seems weird, doesn't it? It just doesn't really fit when you first kind of think about it. One, again, the way it talks is just not really how Mickey talks, at least some parts of it. So much to do. So little time. Take your time. Don't be afraid. It's kind of funny. There are some parts that go like, yeah, you did it, go, and have some explanation. But the way it's really poetic and sophisticated and stuff, it's just doesn't really fit with Mickey, doesn't it? Also, I don't know if Mickey has ever shown that he has the power to communicate to people through dreams or hearts even. I don't know if Mickey has ever shown that kind of power. If you have an example of that, please show me so you can prove me wrong. Also, does Mickey even know who Sora is at this point? He knows about Riku, definitely, from the Keyblade stuff, but does he know about Sora at all? I don't know, maybe Yin Sid was like, hey, this other dude named Sora, he's the actual 
guy. He's the real G. He also seemingly never uses this power again for the rest of the series, lol. But also at the same time, it kind of makes sense. Again, it does sometimes have that jovial attitude to it, just sometimes though. And also it's an encouraging voice. It's telling him to not be afraid, to use his strength. He'll be the one to open the door and just be encouraging. And thirdly, there is a cutscene near the end of the final mix version of the game with Riku being in the realm of darkness. And this kind of similar voice shows up again. And it's clearly Mickey this time around. It says that he has the other Keyblade and that's clearly what Mickey is and has some other allusions to it being Mickey as well. So. That's clearly what that is, and that's giving hints that this could be the same thing. Kind of shares a similar obsession with the door. Also remember, Square was very limited on how they could use Mickey in the first game due to contract issues, so they were only allowed like one cameo scene at the end of the game. So maybe this was the more subtle way of getting Mickey Mouse more in there without saying it's him. So you can go ahead and say that confirms it, but again, those other things are just making it seem, I don't know, it's odd. I just, I'm very conflicted about it. Keep in mind, Nomura said this around like 2002, 2004 maybe, and so this was right when Kingdom Hearts was starting and way before it really got into high gear. He said in the same Ultimania that he had like seven ideas for the next Kingdom Hearts games, so maybe they have changed something at some point to retcon this and made it a different explanation. Who knows? We haven't asked Nomura that yet, so it's still the official explanation, King Mickey, and I guess I'll just have to take it. But still, it feels weird, doesn't it? But the other games might be a little bit different too. Like Kingdom Hearts 2. Now this game's different because the voice only shows up once, really, doesn't really do much. But it's still there, so I'll talk about it a little bit. Also, it's Roxas this time, so not Sora, technically. So for those a few lines, who could that have been? If we want to go with the explanation that it might be the same throughout all of the games, have it being King Mickey, doesn't really make sense. For one, again, don't see Mickey talking like this. And two, remember, this takes place while we're in the data version of the Twilight Town. So I don't know how Mickey could communicate through all that kind of stuff. Could also think Ventus because Roxas shares his image, but kind of the same explanation there. What that most likely is, is Namine. She was his guy throughout the entire prologue. She helped him in various other ways and communicated in other ways like that. So I would have no doubt that she could find a way to talk to him through that. And I don't know about the exact way it talks, but you know, I could see her saying that, I guess. Part of me wants it to be Shion because damn it, that would just be so cute. Having her talk to him through the void would just be, oh, one man can dream though. In the beginning, the nobodies kind of do that voice, but in the dive into the heart section, I don't know if that's them. Hmm. But anyways, at the end of the day, it's probably Namine. Moving on. Next up is Birth by Sleep, and it's pretty obvious what the voice in this one is. There's not really much speculation has to be done on this one. It's a young Sora talking to Ventus in his heart, because of course, Ventus has taken refuge in Sora's heart. We talked about that whole thing before, and this is the scene where that kind of happens. And it may not be exactly how a child talks, but I could definitely see a young Sora talking like this in like a serious tone. So I could definitely see what they're talking about here. And when you listen to Sora later on, you can definitely hear his voice saying something like this. And just reading the dialogue, it's pretty clear that's what's going on here. So yeah. It's just Sora. It's Sora, motherfucker. Next up is Recoded. And I mean, there's a pretty clear explanation for what this one is. And I know it's going to make me seem a bit critical from what I just said before, but... Duh, this is of course Mickey Mouse. For one, Mickey talks to Sora throughout the whole game, throughout like a whole radio kind of thing, so of course Sora can hear Mickey's voice somehow. Literally its opening line is, can you hear me? Which is something that Mickey says later. Can you hear me? Huh? You gotta go after whoever that was. And it talks how Mickey talks. There's explanation points on it, there's excitedness to it, you know, there's not like the other voices. Next up, Union Cross, again, just kind of there. Has a couple lines of dialogue and then you just start the game. But since the stained glass shows all five of the unions on there, and also during the beginning of back cover, the union leaders are shown in this area. My guess is that it's you know, one of those union leaders and that also could be hinting to maybe the same thing in Kingdom Hearts 1. Kind of the simplest explanation, that may be what it is, but with the Mora, it could be anything. Um, so maybe Master Master is Lucio as well. Don't really have a definitive answer on this one. Also, just don't really care about this one. Also, Mickey is there too, so. God. Finally, let's talk about Kingdom Hearts 3 because they briefly show up there too. Something to keep in mind is that the tutorial for Kingdom Hearts 3 takes place after the ending of Kingdom Hearts 3 itself, and I'm assuming it's in the final world because that's where he ends up halfway through it, so I'm guessing that's where he's at during this part. And that gives me my leading theory that it might be Strelitzia. And I say that because one, she clearly has a connection to the final world because she has that star looking thing or whatever it is that communicates between her universe and ours, so she clearly has a connection to this part of the Kingdom Hearts universe, so maybe she can talk to him telepathically through whatever that is, I don't know. Remind was planned from the beginning, so I don't know if this takes place before or after Deer remind she also may be trying to help Sora get him to a point where he could become strong enough to come to the other universe to help her out with whatever she needs help with 
By that same token, it could also be Yuzora. You know, he has a connection to this world as well. And also, it seems like Yuzora is the actual counterpart to Sora and the other universe. So they have a connection in that way. But the only really line that it says in the tutorial is, there are seven hearts to save. So it could be a character that's already in this universe. In that case, maybe it's Kairi who's talking to him, but I don't know. They seem to be really abusing her as of recent. Maybe it's actually Mickey this time. You know, honestly, maybe it could make sense in that way. Do we finally have a time where Mickey makes sense doing anything? My God. That's just my speculation though. Trelitzia and Yuzora would be my two most wanted explanations because I, I think that'd be really cool, but. Uh, uh. But those are the mysterious voices in Kingdom Hearts games and what I think they might personally be. At the end of the day, this is not too serious, not too crazy. You know, I'm just kind of rambling on what I think they might be, kind of having fun with this. And who knows, there may be some characters that we don't even know about yet that haven't even been introduced yet that might be the actual voices. Interesting to discuss nonetheless. Tell me down in the comments below what you guys think about this. What are your personal theories on what the voices might be, at least for the ones we don't know about? Do you, you accept the official explanation of it being King Mickey, or do you think it's someone else? Do you think it might be the same for each of the games in that case? Do you think there might be some characters that I'm missing here that I could be including. Tell me down in the comments below your opinions and theories. I'm very interested to see what you guys have to say. And again, these are just my opinions. Don't be an asshole in the comments if you think I'm missing something. Also, make sure to subscribe, like this video, follow me on Twitter, join the Discord server, turn on notifications. Really awesome if you did. This has been Matt, and I will see you guys.